Namo myo horenge kyo, namo myo horenge kyo, namo myo horenge kyo. Get rid of that. Hello everyone, how are you? I hope this finds you in good health this morning. Uh, it has been freezing rain all night and going on right now. You may be able to hear it in the background. And I've got uh, my new puppy who is growing every day it seems. Uh, but she's behaving right now and we'll see how it goes. Bodhisattvas from under the earth. Sounds like a sci-fi, doesn't it? <laughs> Hopefully not a, uh, a Romero. <laughs> uh, <laughs> entertaining myself. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Liking, subscribing is a Bodhisattva act that helps promote this resource to more people, which is what we're all about, right? So uh, in this translation, uh, Leon Hurwitz's translation of the Lotus Sutra, chapter 15 is uh, a little bit more mysterious in its title, Welling Up Out of the Earth. Well, we've already experienced in the, uh, the apparition of the treasure tower, something coming from beneath the earth. Um, this is going to be bodhisattvas, but uh, the title of this chapter doesn't give it away, as it does in most other translations. Uh, let's see how this goes. At that time, the bodhisattva mahasattvas, who had come from lands and other quarters, exceeding in number the sands of eight, eight Ganges' rivers, rose up in the midst of the great multitude and doing obeisance with palms joined, addressed the Buddha, saying, O world-honored one, if you will allow us, then after the Buddha extinction in this Saha world sphere, the Saha world sphere, by striving to devote vigorous effort to keep, read, and recite, write down and copy, and make offerings to this scriptural canon, we will broadly preach it in this land. So, uh, they've already done uh, all their, their, their gathas and their, every, everybody in the assembly at this point. Certainly in the last chapter, the bodhisattvas have committed to Buddha, to Shakyamuni, that in, in the future, they will take responsibility for spreading uh, this teaching of the lotus uh, long after he's extinct. At that time, the Buddha, Shakyamuni, declared to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Stop, good men. There is no need for you to keep this scripture. What? I mean, that's what you were looking for. Somebody to, in the latter age, the evil age, the age of degeneration, the age of the possible loss of this teaching, that you would need dedicated Bodhisattva to keep this teaching alive, to keep it going, right? To not lose it. But this is the teaching of immediate Buddhahood, never before taught. Well, we've done all sorts of obeyance and everything right. What, what, why should we stop? Why is there no need, right? What is the reason? Well, my Saha world sphere itself has Bodhisattva Mahasattvas equal in number to the sands of 60,000 Ganges rivers. <laughs> Each of whom has in turn a retinue equal in number to the sands of 60,000 Ganges rivers. After my extinction, these men shall be able to keep, read, and recite, and broadly preach this, this scripture this sutra. Well, I mean, imagine, so far in this assembly, we have an un, 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 incalculable number of presences, yeah? Whether you think of them as sentient minds, because Buddhism is about the mind. So this is all about envisioning within our mental capacities, yeah? But even if you see it as actual people, whatever, it's a visual, yeah? I mean, uh, there's no way Vulture Peak or Vulture Mountain was capable of holding or entertaining this many people. This, this is just, right? This is bigger than all of India. 
<laughs> all of these people. So now, oh, I've got a bunch of bodhisattvas, a much greater number than you guys. They're all set to do this. Well, where are they, pray tell? <laughs> yeah. When the Buddha had said this, in the thousand million fold lands of the Saha world sphere, the earth trembled and split. I imagine. And from its cleft, his clefts, there welled up simultaneously incalculable thousands of myriads of millions of bodhisattva mahasattvas. So the earth quaked, and as it split and made fissures in the land, up spring up all these new bodhisattva mahasattvas. <coughs> An in inconceivable amount. Now I'll clue you in on something. Coming up from out of the earth is a visual mental ploy to indicate like seeds, which we use all the time in Buddhism, or the lotus flower, which we use all the time in Buddhism, coming up from beneath the earth to blossom and seed. This is an indication of yet to be, future, if you will, a vision of what is to come. Makes sense, yeah? So the bodhisattvas from beneath the earth, which he hasn't said yet, but he did say all the bodhisattvas came out of the, the clefts of the earth, yeah. They're actually future bodhisattvas, which answers the question how, that Manjushri was asking, how are these old men now bequeathing their, their lives to your teachings going to be around in a thousand years? Eh. So Shakyamuni cleverly says, oh, they're going to be there, not these bodhisattvas, but bodhisattva mahasattvas nonetheless. And just in case you're not sure, let me conjure them up from beneath the earth like a seed blossoming in the future. Right? Starting to make sense now? These bodhisattvas all had bodies of golden hue, displaying the 32 marks and the incalculable rays of light. La! <laughs> yeah. What a movie this would make. They all had been under the Saha world sphere in an open space belonging to this sphere, the future. When these bodhisattva, or potential future, let's say, more accurately, huh? They represent potential. When these bodhisattvas heard the sound of Shakyamuni's preaching voice, they emerged from below, each bodhisattva at the head of and commanding a great multitude, each leading a retinue equal in number to the sands of 60,000 Ganges rivers. How much more numerous, then, were those leading retinues equal in number to the sands of 50, 40, 30, 20, or 10,000 Ganges rivers? How much the more numerous those leading retinues equal in number from any of these down to the sands of one Ganges River or half a Ganges River or one quarter a Ganges River <laughs> or anything down to 1,000 million million Nayuta of Ganges Rivers. How much the more numerous those whose retinues numbered a thousand myriads of millions of Nayutas. How much the more numerous... Okay, we get it. How much the more numerous those whose retinues numbered a thousand myriads and hundred myriads, anything down to one myriad. How much the more numerous those whose retinues numbered a thousand, a hundred, or ten. How much the more numerous those who brought with them five, four, three, two, or one disciple. How much the more numerous. No, 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 stop. Sorry, I had to stop the dog from chewing wires. I don't know why dogs love it. Cats too, don't they? The likes of these were incalculable, endless, and as neither numeration nor par parable could know. All right, we got it. Just, this is future humanity we're talking about, yeah? When these bodhisattvas had emerged from the earth, they all went to the fine seven-jeweled stupa. Ah, what a coincidence. 
situated in open space, right? Where were where were the thus come one many jewels and Shakyamuni Buddha? When they had arrived, turning toward the two world honored ones, they revered or um, venerated at their feet with heads bowed, then did obeisance to everything up through the pl uh, places prepared for the Buddhas on the lion thrones under the Bodhi tree of sundry gems, doing three turns of rightward circumambulation, circumambulation, sorry, I said that wrong, and paying humble respects with palms joined, hands folded. They lauded them with varied bodhisattva praises. Then <laughs> they stood off to one side. Imagine that. With joyful expectation, looking up at the two honored ones. All right, this is obviously uh, hyperbolic visual uh, information. The, the point is to stop trying to identify, right? This is a big problem in Buddhism. Our samsaric desire to identify, enumerate, discriminate, right? So these huge unfathomable numbers, unknowable quantities, they're, they're always in service of breaking us away from that kind of thinking. So this is immense. Just be amazed, yes? These bodhisattva masatvas welling up out of the earth by resort to bodhisattvas' sundry devices of praise lauded the Buddha such time persisting 50 minor kalpas. Yeah, I imagine it took a while. <laughs> I laud the Buddha. I also laud the Buddha. You know, to millions and millions of Ganges' sands of rivers later, I too laud the Buddha. <laughs> yeah, it would have taken some time. <laughs> During this time, Shakyamuni Buddha was seated in silence, and the fourfold assemblies were also seated in silence. The 50 minor kalpas, thanks to the Buddha's supernatural power, were made to appear to the great multitudes as if it was just half a day. So there we go with that time dilation compression again, right? And the Buddhism does this a lot, but in the Lotus Sutra, Shakyamuni employs this, this time unhinging, and we'll see why, to great effect, this is important, especially now as we approach the 16th chapter. So keep this in mind, that time is an issue in Buddhism that is also of the samsaric attachment, identified, measured, and we need to break free of that as well. That's a tough one, but he's been preparing us for a while, yeah? At that time, the fourfold assembly, thanks to the Buddha's supernatural power, also saw bodhisattvas fill the open air of incalculable hundreds of thousands of myriads of millions of lands. Within this multitude of bodhisattvas were four leaders. Wow. They lead a whole lot, don't they? But obviously, these are special. They have a position of seniority, so they must have a special purpose also. They are leaders. The first named superior conduct, the second named limitless conduct, the third named pure conduct, and the fourth named conduct standing firm. So these are all different wordy prescriptions for behavior. And we just got through reading a chapter on comfortable conduct, right? So these are, these leaders represent for us not just the, the program, the archetype, the, 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 the um, what am I to say, the modus operandi of bodhisattvas, which we've been learning. But the behavior, the conduct, the presentation of bodhisattvas to the world. And these are leaders or foremost in that endeavor. Okay, okay. 
How do we practice? These four bodhisattvas were the supreme chiefs among that multitude, the masters who commanded and led. At the head of his respective great multitude, each of them, together with the others, joined palms, folded hands, and gazing at Shakyamuni Buddha, inquired after him, saying, O world-honored one, are you in good health and free of pain? Are you conducting yourself in comfort or not? Do those worthy of conveyance to salvation or liberation, emancipation, accept your doctrine easily or do they not? How's it going teaching these guys? Are they not causing the world honored one to suffer fatigue and labor? And at that time, the four great bodhisattvas proclaimed gathas, saying, O world honored one, are you in comfort? Are you in good health, free of pain? When teaching and converting living beings, do you contrive to do so without fatigue or disgust? Also, do the living beings accept conversion with ease, or do they not? Are they not causing the world-honored one to experience fatigue or labor? We know this is difficult, and there is one of you, and there is, well, you know how many of us. We all empathize with the difficulty of taking minds from samsara to enlightenment. How's it going, right? Now, you may notice by now, or if you haven't, I will point it out, that everyone who addresses this treasure tower is doing so by interaction with Shakyamuni Buddha. Who has been speaking to Taho directly? So I remind you, Taho Buddha, which violates for older uh, um, Buddhists the idea that more than one Buddha can exist in a universe, represents past Buddha. These new bodhisattvas from the earth represent future Buddha. Hmm? Is this making sense now? Shakyamuni the current Buddha at the time of this teaching, yes? At that time, in the midst of the great Bodhisattva multitude, the world-honored one said, Verily, verily, good men, the thus come one is comfortable in good health and free of pain. The sundry living beings are easy to convert and to convey to liberation. At least they were at that time. I have neither fatigue nor labor. And what is the reason for this? These living beings, for ages now, have ever been accepting conversion by me. Because I'm here. I'm in their face, right? Also, in the presence of past Buddhas, humbly honoring them and holding them in solemn esteem, they have planted wholesome roots. They don't know that explicitly, but implicitly, that is the way of all phenomena. So how could they not? When these living beings first saw my body and heard my preachings, they straightaway accepted me with resolve, entering into the knowledge of the thus come one, except for those whose previous repeated practice was devoted to learning the lesser vehicle. Right, the earlier teachings, earlier teachings which definitely were Shakyamuni's, but they're labeled lesser vehicles because the the students, the monks, twisted them into a limited form, not because they were taught as a limited form. Although we learned in the parable of the conjured city that Shakyamuni takes responsibility for giving them a pause, a play, a respite in their arduous journey toward enlightenment, it was taken by the monks as the ultimate goal achievable in this lifetime. This, this cancer of thinking that nothing good can happen in this lifetime. This is all about suffering through so that in a future lifetime, everything will be great. I mean... That's the basis of religion. Let's just face it. 
That is not what Shakyamuni is about. That is not what Buddhism is about. It has always been from day one, how do we live this life well without the suffering? That was the goal of Siddhartha Gautama before he even started on his path toward enlightenment. So how would it be different now that he's achieved it? It's so frustrating, eh? So that's why he points it out. Um... Uh, Everybody is understanding this teaching except, he says, for those whose previous repeated practice was devoted to learning the lesser vehicle, a lesser vehicle which they themselves constructed, albeit from Shakyamuni's teaching. You see how this can be confusing? Such persons as these I know, I now, sorry, I now enable to hear this scripture as well as and thus to enter the Buddha knowledge. Now, with the Lotus Sutra, I'm breaking them of that habit, which Nichiren would say, this is Shakubuku. Okay, you guys have been fooling yourself for 40 years. Let me now straighten you out. Let's go the rest of the way down this, car, this road to the, uh, the actual goal. Hmm? At that time, the great Bodhisattvas proclaimed Gatha, saying, How excellent, how excellent, O great hero, O world-honored one, that the sundry living beings can be so easily converted and conveyed to liberation, that they can inquire into Buddha's profound knowledge and, having heard it, carry it out with resolve. We rejoice accordingly. Cool. Validation. At that time, the world-honored one lauded the chief bodhisattvas, uh, the chief bodhisattva, yeah, all four. How excellent, how excellent, O oh good men, that you all can produce for the thus come one thoughts of appropriate joy. At that time, the bodhisattva Maitreya, remember him, and a multitude of bodhisattvas equal in number to the sands of 8,000 Ganges rivers all thought, From of old, we have never seen nor heard of such a great multitude of bodhisattva mahasattvas welling up out of the earth, remaining in the presence of the world honored one, making offerings to the thus come one, and inquiring after him with palms joined in folded hands. Where did these jokers come from? Who, are, who the heck do they think they are? Yeah. <laughs> Humans never change. At that time, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva Maitreya, knowing what the Bodhisattvas equal in number to the sands of the 8,000 Ganges rivers were thinking inwardly, those are the ones that were originally at the assembly, right? Who's been, who've been bequeathing their lives to the, to, uh, dedicated to the uh, uh, ongoing proselytization of the Lotus Sutra, who've been snubbed by Shakyamuni. Stop, I have these guys. And then, right? And also wishing to resolve his own doubts, because Manjushri, as well as everyone else, is a little quizzical as to what's going on, faced the Buddha with palms joined and then questioned him in gathas, saying, The incalculable thousands of myriads of millions of bodhisattvas in a great multitude, such as has never before been seen, beg you, O venerable among two-legged beings, to explain. Whence ha have come, uh, for what reason are gathered those of huge bodies and great supernatural penetrations, their wisdom beyond reckoning and discussion, their resolve firm, who have the great power of withstanding humiliation, whom the beings desire to see. Whence come they? Each bodhisattva's retainers, whom he brings in tow, are in number incalculable. Leading retainers as numerous as the sands of 60,000 Ganges, such are the great multitudes single-mindedly seeking the Buddha path. 
These great masters' retinues, equal in number to the sands of 60,000 Ganges rivers, have come together to make offerings to the Buddha and to guard and keep this scripture. Those bringing in tow retinues equal in number to the sands of 50,000 Ganges are in number in excess of these, while those whose retinues number 40 or 30,000 from 20 to 10,000, uh, here we go again, 1,100 or anything down to one Ganges River is in unfathomable, right? How many grains of sand are there in one Ganges River? Oh, I don't know. Or half or a third or a quarter or a myriad millionth or a thousand myriads of new Nayutas or myriad million, you know, or anything down to half a million are again in number superior to them. Uh, those who bring from a hundred myriads down to one myriad, a thousand down to a hundred or ten, fifty or ten, or anything down to three, two, or one, or who alone and without retinue, desiring to remain in isolation, come together before the Buddha, are in number yet again in excess of these, great multitudes like these. If a man should count them on an abacus, for kalpas, numbering more than Ganges' sands, still could not be fully known. These great, imposingly majestic, vigorously preserving multitudes of, persevering multitudes of bodhisattvas, for whose sake are they preaching the Dharma, teaching, converting, and achieving successes? Well, I would have thought that was obvious, but Manjushri is a little upset here. You have all of us here already dedicated obeyance. And up pop these guys from nowhere, and they're going to do it? Explain. As whose followers did they first launch their thoughts? Who trained them? We've been here with you all along. Who trained them? See, there's still this adherence to Shakyamuni as the source of Buddha, which he is not. He is, in fact, just another guy who's endeavored to reach Buddha, Buddhahood, Buddhaness, right? Because Buddha is in the mind, the mind emergent from this flesh and blood body. And to exalt the Dharma of which Buddha? Because it's going to be you. Whose scriptures do they accept? Bear and put into practice. Which Buddha's path do they cultivate by repeated practice? Such as these bodhisattvas' power of supernatural penetration and such their great wisdom that the earth is in all four quarters, trembles and splits as they all well up out of its midst. O world-honored one from of old, I have never before seen such a thing. I beg you to state its origin, the name of the land. I am ever traveling through various realms. You have never before, uh, yet I've never before seen it, such a thing. Within this multitude, I do not recognize a single person. Yet here, of a sudden, they emerge from the earth. I beg you to explain the cause. Now in this great assembly of incalculable hundreds of thousands of millions, the bodhisattvas all wish to know these things. The bodhisattva multitudes cause and condition from first to last. O world-honored one of incalculable excellences, we beg you to resolve our manifold doubts. At that time, the Buddhas, who were emanations of the body of Shakyamuni, coming from incalculable thousands of myriads of millions of lands in different quarters, sat cross-legged on lion thrones under jewel trees in the eight directions. Oh, remember, we haven't talked about them in a little while. Yeah, he summoned all of his emanations, his embodiments of Buddha, in other words, other achievements of buddhaness from all over all quarters hmm? 
again, hard to fit in this imaginary landscape, but just shift our attention to them. Those Buddhas as attendants, seeing these great multitudes of bodhisattvas in the four quarters of the thousand million fold world, welling up from out of the earth and de uh, dwelling in open space, each addressed his Buddha saying, O world honored one, whence come these great multitudes of incalculable, limitless asamkayas of bodhisattvas? At that time, the Buddha declared each to his attendants, good men, wait a bit. There is a Bodhisattva Mahasattva named Maitreya on whom some uh, Shakyamuni Buddha has conferred the prophecy that he shall be the next Buddha. Directly following him, he has already inquired into this matter and the Buddha will now answer him. Of course, you all should hear it through his intercession. At that time, Shakyamuni Buddha declared to the Bodhisattva Maitreya, how excellent. How excellent. O Ajita, which is his name for Maitreya, that you are able to, uh, to question the Buddha on such a great matter as this. Good catch. Good question, Maitreya. You should all together, with a single mind, don the armor of vigorous perseverance and launch a firm resolve. Because this is going to rock your world, right? For the thus come one now wishes to lay open and to proclaim the Buddha's wisdom, the Buddha's powers of self-mastery and supernatural penetration, the Buddha's power to move with resolute speed of a lion, the Buddha's power of imposing frighteningly great strength. At that time, the world-honored one wishing to restate this meaning proclaimed Gatha's saying, Oh boy. He's prepping the ground here. Because he knows this is going to rock their world, right? You should strive vigorously for single-mindedness. Pay attention. For I wish to state this matter. Allow yourselves no doubts or regrets. For the Buddha's knowledge is beyond reckoning or discussion. Put forward now the power to believe to know this truth. Dwelling in the midst of the tolerant and the good for a dharma never before heard, you shall all now be able to hear. I am now assuring you, reassuring you. Do not allow yourselves to harbor doubts or fears, for the Buddha speaks no falsehoods and his knowledge is incalculable. The prime dharma that I have gained is profound, not subject to discrimination. As such, I will now preach it. All of you, listen single-mindedly. Can we drive that point home any harder? This now is the heart of the Lotus Sutra, which he begins halfway through this chapter. And at this time, <laughs> suspense, I'm going to hold off till the next video because this is, I don't want to break in the middle of this. So you all ready? <laughs> yeah. This is the part of, uh, This is the part that Tendai, Ji'i, and Zanran, and Nitrin, Dengyo, all recognize. This is, a, this is the instance, the first instance of a, an earth-shattering change. Although he's been talking about it all along, right? But so much of this sutra so far has been preparation. Get ready, I'm not lying, this is now the new, this is not a new thing, but it's going to feel like new. This, I'm going to clear this up, right? Starting with Shariputra, the, the leader amongst our hearts, that eh, what you've been chasing for so long ain't, ain't quite it. Uh, it was helpful, it'll help you along the way, but you're not there yet. And Shariputra was overjoyed to hear that there's more to learn. Great attitude, right? The Arhats who got up in the first, second chapter and left, 
well, oh well. Uh, those would be the people still pursuing the three vehicles, right? They don't get it yet. They will someday, but not today. And so slowly through the Lotus Sutra, we've been getting it that this is revolutionary, that people need to let go of what they thought they knew because this is going to blow them away. And even with all of this, the bodhisattvas who are there, well-learned, all say to Shakyamuni, we'll do it, we'll keep it going for you. Once you're extinct, don't worry, this won't, this won't go away. And now Shakyamuni in this, very quickly, stop, no need, got my crew already together. What? So not only is this a new end goal, a new direction, a new instruction in how to really fully self-realize. But the crew's already together to take care of it. How in the dark have we been? Wouldn't that be the source of doubts that he's referring to? And now he's telling them, all right, here it comes. Don't start freaking. <laughs> I don't lie. Now that I've got your attention, before you go running off half-cocked, now I'm going to tell you. So here it comes. With the next video, we'll begin. Thank you for listening. Use the uh, links in the description for lots of free stuff, uh, podcasts, and uh, lots and lots of free stuff, uh, information, stuff you can print out and use uh, for study and, and, and dialogue on uh, threefoldlows.com, right? Um, and if you can purchase uh, study materials like the ebooks and so on, uh, the reference, I really suggest the Buddhist reference uh, books. And uh, eventually, when I finish uh, my going through and synthesis of uh, Nichiren's doctrine in a translation of the Lotus Sutra with as much clear dialogue as I can remove these cultural fetishes and biases that cloud the issue. Uh, we'll have a brand new way of reading the Lotus Sutra. I'm, I'm a little exhausted by that endeavor, but uh, I'm convinced that it's absolutely necessary, so I'm working very hard on that for all of us. Um, keep your practice strong, take care of your health, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.